Our next speaker is uh, Milan Avicic uh, from the Humboldt University of Berlin. I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me here. Quantum contextuality became a hot topic. Recently received many fundings and support, mostly based on many new results, most prominent of which is connection between error correction for quantum computation with contextual sets based on hypergraphs, which we are going to make use of in our work heavily. So what is contextuality versus non-contextuality? I will just introduce Stern-Gerlach's three-dimensional gate. We can forward any particle to further gates and so on. So the paradox of the contextuality versus non-contextuality contains the description of classical theories of such situations because classical theory assumes predetermined values for all the observables. And that means in this example that for non-contextual sets, we at some point face the necessity of a particle to simply disappear. And that's the difference between quantum and classical theories, where quantum theories are contextual in the sense that they give results of measurements of particular observables based on the measurements carried out on other observables within an experimental setup. So contextual sets can be used for establishing quantum non-locality, the quantum encryption, engineering of gates within a quantum computer. And with respect to this application, we have got a similarity between contextual sets and graph sets that are used in one-way quantum computation. For gates, we need a lot of such graph states. And also, when we apply contextual sets, we have the need for a lot of contextual sets. And in this talk, I'm going to concentrate on the so-called Cohen-Specker sets, because they are the most numerous and the most important among all the contextual sets. They are all proofs of Cohen-Specker theorems, and we see here an indication of revival of interest of recent papers in that problem. Another aspect of the new interest in contextual sets are many new experiments, some of which are concentrated on four-dimensional, then eight-dimensional, and in the end, three-dimensional Cohen-Specker set. So based on that informal introduction in the beginning, we can formalize the definition of the Cohen-Specker set in the sense that no two orthogonal vectors can both be assigned value one, and that not all of them can be assigned value zero. Again, that means that a particle has to take one of the three or four whatever ports. So what these ports can be ascribed to, to particular vectors within a spin space. And when we look at the orthogonality and the meaning of the orthogonality, it's simple, but it takes us to a set of nonlinear equations, which are notoriously exponentially complex. And with brute force, that's a mission impossible. But fortunately, we have realized the connection between the hypergraphs and the MMP diagrams we worked with before and the uh, Cohen-Specker set can nicely sit on such hypergraphs. In particular, when we deduce new Cohen-Specker sets from huge master sets, mostly found by our co-workers Aravind and Weigel, and then we apply our algorithms to find as many Cohen-Specker sets as needed. So how does it work? We ascribe ASCII characters to vertices. Each vertex corresponds to a vector. And the orthogonality is in introduced by a string of vertices. It's a lot of text here, but that is much simpler to be understood. So for example, one, two, three, four. It's this edge with four vertices. Also this one, C, E, three, five is here. So we can see the crux of the Cohen-Specker set and paradox here. When we try to assign one to vertices, we see that according to the rules, one and only one, one should be assigned to a 
vertex within an edge. And we, for example, see that here we don't have a possibility to assign a one because at this edge we already have one here. If we try to assign one here, we see that it clashes with one present here in this edge. Here clashes with this one. Here it clashes again with this one. So it's impossible. We can approach the problem constructively and try to find as many sets as possible directly and exhaustively. And we obtained at the beginning 1,233 sets with up to 24 edges and 24 vertices with components from this set. Also, there are other components from other sets as possible solutions, but it takes a lot of time. And then I came to an idea to use humanly found set and to just reduce the number of edges, peeling them off from the set I start with. Why no one came with such an idea before and only two were found just because people didn't realize the correspondence with the hypergraphs. So with stripping, as opposed to this one month on 100 CPUs, we get all the sets within one minute on one single CPU. So that was an approach which was worth pursuing, and especially when we realized that peeled off sets lead us to critical cohen specker sets that are important for uh, an experiment. Because when we add orthogonalities, we don't get anything new. So we concentrate on the simplest cohen specker sets, meaning that if we remove any edge, it's not anymore cohen specker set. But 2424 only gave us four more critical sets. So we went to 6075 master set and obtained billions of critical cohen specker sets. However, they've got very nice features, but we came down to 2613, and there are no Cabellos or Perez sets here. So we tried another master set, obtaining again a lot of critical Kaya sets. And here we found every Perez set, all Cabellos and so on, but no one of the previous class. So these two classes are completely disjoint. Then we continued further on to six dimensional, that means three one half spin and to eight dimensional so why don't we use recently announced very simple three dimensional set with only 13 vectors because it's wrong first of all when we have a look at the stern gerlach gate, we see that in all edges here, one of the ports is missing. So particles cannot just disappear. We have to take them into account. So the set is not 13, 16, but 25, 16, 25 vertices. And then they made a, a mistake in assuming here that we should ascribe to these vertices, these four vertices, simultaneously values, simultaneously once. And that's true that we cannot ascribe one to more than one of these four vertices, but then they compare that with the statistics for quantum mechanics, which is inconsistent. So it doesn't work. We have to find the statistics for the classical non-contextual assignment, and these statistics then give us 1.6, which is greater than 1.33, and there is no contextuality here. So consequently, this experiment in this part is also wrong. And the smallest three-dimensional Kaya set is still Bubs or Boobs, I think he calls himself, with 49 vertices and 36 edges. And then it comes the one which is usually considered the smallest because, again, <coughs> vertices are dropped inconsistently. And these sets are very difficult to work with, practically impossible to experimentally implement. So we are now searching for smaller sets, but running extremely demanding jobs on computers. Thank you. Okay. Um, so are there any other questions? Uh, uh, you just talked about the uh, new inequality. In that inequality, we need uh, 13 vertices. Why do you see that 
inequality is not a crime. There is no inequality, first of all, there is only equality. Because when you go to original assignment, you see, they consider these four vertices, <coughs> H1, H2, H3, and H0, and they claim that when you set it up so that the particle goes through all vertices, you cannot ascribe more than one one to these four vertices. So that's a maximum of ones that you can ascribe to them. That's correct. There is no problem here. But then they go to compare it with the quantum measurement in a statistical way. They, they present the statistics, they say, a probability of exiting any port is one third, you see, one third. And then when you sum up these four probabilities, you come to this result, 1.33. And then they compare it with something obtained deterministically, with one. It's no go, because when you calculate it quantum mechanically, then you have to let the particle to the first Stern-Gerlach gate, then you ad adiabatically rotate it. You have to let it through all possible 16 Stern-Gerlach gates, and then you have to compare it with this result. No one has done it. I mean, it's too complicated. Actually, there are two inequalities in the... Yeah, the other one uh, I didn't consider here. But the, the title of the paper is State Independent Proof of cohen specker Theorem. And that's the first inequality. Okay. So that's what interests me, because my talk is about cohen specker And the other non-contextuality, contextuality they considered is not about that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned nonlinear equations. Yeah. What, what is the source of this nonlinearity? The source of nonlinearity is multiplication of the components. So when you look at this equation, it's a nonlinear equation. Every pair is a product, and you cannot solve this equation in a linear way. It's a typically exponentially complex nonlinear problem. Okay. So let's get the thing to speak again. 